The Hero For Swaminathan, events took an unexpected turn. Father looked over the newspaper he was reading under the hall lamp and said, Swami, listen to this. News is, hats off to the bravery of a village lad who, while returning home by the jungle path, came face to face with a tiger. The paragraph described the fight the boy had with the tiger and his flight up a tree, where he stayed for half a day till some people came that way and killed the tiger. After reading it through, father looked at Swaminathan fixedly and asked, What do you say to that? Swaminathan said, I think he must have been a very strong and grown-up person, not at all a boy. How could a boy fight a tiger? You think you are wiser than the newspaper? Father sneered. A man may have the strength of an elephant and yet be a coward, whereas another may have the strength of a straw, but if he has courage, he can do anything. Courage is everything. Strength and age are not important. Swami said, how can it be, father? Suppose I have all the courage. What can I do if a tiger should attack me? Leave alone strength. Can you prove that you have courage? Let me see if you can sleep alone tonight in my office room. A frightful suggestion, Swaminathan thought. He had always slept beside his granny, and any change in this arrangement kept him trembling and awake all night. He hoped at first that his father was only joking. He mumbled a week. Yes, and tried to change the subject. He said very loudly and with a great deal of enthusiasm, We are going to admit even elders in our cricket club hereafter. We are buying brand new bats and balls. Our captain has asked me to tell you. We'll see about it later, Father cut in. You must sleep alone hereafter. Swaminathan realized that the matter had gone beyond his control. From a challenge, it had become a plain command. He knew his father's tenacity at such moments. From the first of next month, I'll sleep alone, father. No, you must do it now. It is disgraceful, sleeping beside granny or mother, like a baby. You are in the second form, and I don't at all like the way you are being brought up, he said, and looked at his wife, who was rocking the cradle. Swaminathan's father sat gloomily gazing at the newspaper on his lap. Swaminathan rose silently and tiptoed away to his bed in the passage. Granny was sitting up in her bed and remarked, Boy, are you already feeling sleepy? Don't you want a story? Swaminathan made wild gesticulations to silence Granny, but that good lady saw nothing. So Swaminathan threw himself on his bed and pulled the blanket over his face. Granny said, Don't cover your face. Are you really very sleepy? Swaminathan leant over and whispered, Please, please shut up, Granny. Don't talk to me and don't let anyone call me, even if the house is on fire. If I don't sleep at once, I shall perhaps die. He turned over, curled and snored under the blanket till he found his blanket being pulled away. Presently, father came and stood over him. Swami, get up, he said. Swaminathan stirred and groaned, as if in sleep. Father said, get up, Swami. Granny pleaded. Why do you disturb him? Get up, Swami, he said for the third time, and Swaminathan got up. Father rolled up his bed, took it under his arm and said, come with me. Swaminathan looked at Granny, hesitated for a moment and followed his father into the office room. On the way, he threw a look of appeal at his mother and she said, Why do you take him to the office room? He can sleep in the hall, I think. I don't think so, father said, and Swaminathan slunk behind him with bowed head. Let me sleep in the hall, father, he pleaded. Your office room is very dusty and there may be scorpions behind your law books. There are no scorpions, little fellow. Sleep on the bench if you like. Can I have a lamp burning in the room? No, you must learn not to be afraid of darkness. It is only a question of habit. You must cultivate good habits. Will you at least leave the door open? All right, but promise me you will not roll up your bed and go to your granny's side at night. If you do it, mind you, 
I will make you the laughing stock of your school. Swaminathan felt cut off from humanity. He was pained and angry. He didn't like the strain of cruelty he saw in his father's nature. He hated the newspaper for printing the tiger's story. He wished that the tiger hadn't spared the boy, who didn't appear to be a boy after all, but a monster. As the night advanced and the silence in the house deepened, his heart beat faster. He remembered all the stories of devils and ghosts he had heard in his life. He was faint with fear. A ray of light from the street lamp strayed in and cast shadows on the wall. Through the stillness, all kinds of noises reached his ears. The ticking of the clock, the rustle of trees, the sound of snoring, and some vague night insects humming. He covered himself so completely that he could hardly breathe. Every moment he expected the devils to come and to carry him away. Swaminathan hurriedly got up and spread his bed under the bench and crouched there. It seemed to be a much safer place, more compact and reassuring. He shut his eyes tight and encased himself in his blanket once again, and, unknown to himself, fell asleep and dreamt that a tiger was chasing him. His feet stuck to the ground. He desperately tried to escape, but his feet would not move. The tiger was at his back, and he could hear its claws scratch ground, scratch, scratch, and then a light thud. Swaminathan tried to open his eyes, but his eyelids were not open, and the nightmare continued. It threatened to continue forever. Swaminathan groaned in despair. With a desperate effort, he opened his eyes. He put his hand out to feel Granny's presence at his side, as was his habit. But he only touched the wooden leg of the bench, and his lonely state came back to him. He sweated with fright. And now, what was this rustling? As it came nearer, he crawled out from under the bench, hugged it with all his might, and used his teeth on it like a mortal weapon. I something has bitten me, went forth an agonizing, thundering cry, and was followed by a heavy tumbling and falling amidst furniture. In a moment, father, the cook, and a servant came in, carrying lights. And all three of them fell on the burglar, who lay amidst the furniture with a bleeding ankle. Congratulations were showered on Swaminathan the next day. His classmates looked at him with respect and his teacher patted his back. The headmaster said that he was a true scout. Swaminathan had bitten into the flesh of one of the most notorious housebreakers of the district, and the police were grateful to him for it. The inspector said, Why don't you join the police when you grow up? Swaminathan said for the sake of politeness, Certainly, yes. Though he had quite made up his mind to be an engine driver, a railway guard, or a bus conductor later in life. When he returned home from the club that night, father asked, Where is the boy? He's asleep. Already? He didn't have a wink of sleep the whole of last night, said his mother. Where is he sleeping? In his usual place, mother said casually. He went to bed at 7.30. Sleeping beside granny again, father said. No wonder he wanted to be asleep before I could return home. Clever boy. Mother lost her temper. You let him sleep where he likes. You needn't risk his life again. Father mumbled as he went in to change. All right, Molly Coddle and spoil him as much as you like. Only don't blame me afterwards. Swaminathan followed the whole conversation from under the blanket, felt tremendously relieved to hear that his father was giving up on him.